Verse 3, for God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, he's talking about the Torah now, by the way, weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Remember, the Torah is a great tool. It's God's very document. It's perfect in its representation, in its delivery. However, outside of the, the working of the Spirit, the, the Torah itself is weak. It cannot change the flesh. It cannot force the flesh to comply. It's weak in that regards. Um, the flesh itself is also weak. So there's a, a diabolical relationship between the weakness of the Torah and the weakness of the flesh working together. Go back and read the previous chapter. Paul wants to keep the Torah, but because of his flesh, he can't keep the Torah. That's why he says, the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I end up doing, right? Who's going to deliver him from this body of death? So the, the, the weakness of the flesh has the inability of, of keeping the Torah the way God wants it to be kept, and the weakness of the Torah has the inability of changing the heart of the individual outside of the power of the Holy Spirit. The Torah in and of itself isn't designed to function in that way. So God, in order to solve the problem of the, both the weakness of the Torah and the weakness of the flesh, did what Paul says? He sent his own son in the likeness of sin flesh, and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh. Of course, sin is the violation of Torah commands. Um, and we're going to read about... Um, how uh, this action of God's helps us not only to fulfill the righteous requirement of the Torah, but also helps us to overcome the condemnation of sin in the flesh. Otherwise, without the Spirit's work, the Torah is a condemnation document. It's a document of death. It's a, it has a ministry of death, and that's what Paul is going to go on to say in um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the Torah, the letter written on stone, is a ministry of death. The letters carved on stone are a ministry of death. And he even hints at that again, the, the very commandment that I thought was supposed to bring life in the previous chapter, chapter 7, was actually found to be bringing death to me. Why? Because the Torah condemns sin. He continues, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but how? according to the Spirit. Notice in Paul's explanation, the Torah itself doesn't get removed from the equation. It's the condemnation of the Torah, the pronouncement against unrepentant sinners, and the stubborn uh, volition of the, of the flesh. That's the part that gets severed. We still end up with a struggle, like Paul talks about in Romans 7, where we have to uh, continually say no to the flesh until one day we put on this immortality, right? Um, mortality and immortality. Mortality will give way to immortality, and the flesh will give way to um, a, re a, a resurrected body that can obey God fully and 100%. But in the meantime, what Yeshua did for us on the cross is he gave us the ability to obey God with the um, renewal of the Spirit. He gave us the ability to fulfill the righteous requirement that the Torah was um, asking of us all along in the spiritual sense of the word. Provided, right, there's a proviso here, the contingency in Paul's letter, and we'll read about this here in a second, is that we walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And he's going to flesh it out here in the next, ver next few verses. God gave us the ability to walk out the Torah by the power of the Spirit, but that doesn't mean that, like a robot, we're going to automatically do it. Because we still have the flesh housed up inside of us, even though there's been a, a, um, a, um, a separation on the inside, right? A division between the old man and the new man. The old man has been put to death, but there's still this remnant of the concept inside of us, um, the, the mindset, the old uh, habits, and what, it was, what did one pastor say are our, our hang ups, our hold ups, our hang ups, our hold ups, our headaches, and our heartaches, right? All of those things kind of weigh us down from time to time as we try to walk out this um, sanctification in the power of the Spirit. What does Paul say? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. This verse could be talking about unbelievers. This verse could be talking about believers. Unbelievers who set their who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But that's also true of a sanctified believer as well. It's what I think Ryrie's old Bible used to call um, the um, carnal Christian. Something like that. I think it's Ryrie's Bible. Uh, it's one of those old um, King James uh, versions that I grew up reading. 
talked about the carnal Christian, right? The person who, who lives according to the flesh. And if you're a believer listening to this podcast or watching this YouTube video, then you know what I'm talking about as I'm drawing to a close in this part of, of Paul's letter since I'm running out of time. Even though you're a believer, you still make mistakes. You still decide to sin from time to time, even though it's not the thing you want to do. Why? It's because the flesh man, even though he's been, he, even though he has been put to death by the body of by <laughs> by the body of Messiah, even though he's been put to death by the spirit of Messiah by by Christ's sacrifice, nevertheless the vestiges, the remnants of the old man are still floating around in your body. The uh, the memory of what it was like to live in sin is still there. Your mind still has this familiar um a, attachment to its old um bad habits and things like that and so it's easy uh, unless you maintenance yourself and make a, a habit uh it's easy to just slip back into the default sinful mindset that you used to walk in of course that's why there are commandments over and over again found out throughout the new testament to live not according to the flesh but according to the spirit just like we're reading here and so we've got to like paul says live according to the spirit now this is something that you can't do unless you're a believer uh, because you don't have the spirit living in you. So um, those who live according to the flesh, you could be a believer or an unbeliever, but those who live according to the spirit are definitely believers, and they set their minds on the things of the spirit, but it is a conscious effort on your part. You've got to make the decision to do it. Paul continues in verse 6, For to set the mind on this flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life. Right? He just gives us the consequences of the, uh, each of these choices that we make. And in verse 7, um, and I'll conclude with verse 7 and 8, For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those, in verse 8, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I'll stop there tonight. We'll flesh that out. We'll pick this up again next week and begin to exegete this kind of passage in Romans chapter 8 before we turn back into our Holy Spirit passages. But that'll do it now for um, Exploring the Shema, Discussions on the Issues of Trinity.